Hi, I'm Dave Dinkel, and recently I had a student tell me that he spoke to an REO manager, and the manager told him that they would not do a property in a land trust. As I worked into it further, it was not an REO asset manager. Uh, frankly, what it was, a guy reselling uh, pools or bulk purchases of REOs. So what he did is he was somewhere involved in the bank, said, look, take 100 properties, we'll give you a discounted price. Fannie Mae does that. If you do want to buy 10 properties from them, they'll take them off the listing, sell them to you in one shot, and give you a discount on all of them. So you can be a bulk purchaser through Fannie Mae on your own. You don't have to go be a big shot at the bank and come up with 5 or $10 million. So the, this person who's redistributing the pool said, no, uh, that proof of funds that you have may be your funding partner, but I want to see an LLC with that money on the, in the LLC or the funding partner on title. I don't have to do that. Uh, why would I put money into an LLC where I'm not the full owner or something where this person has to be on title so that I put the money in and I'm invisible, I'm going to say. Now, 99.9% .9 and maybe it's 99.999% of the time, we've never had an REO bank say to us we can't use a land trust in short sales all the time. Why in short sales? Because you can change the beneficial ownership of the land trust literally in a couple of minutes. It's not recorded in the public record. Should be if you change the ownership you're going to avoid paying doc stamps it, and it's illegal. I'm not going to get into the land trust aspect now. What I'm saying to you is this. If you hear from somebody that you cannot do something don't take it for granted immediately. One of the first places to go is literally, well, I'll give you a great example. I have a uh, student in California, and he said to me, where can I get transactional funding? And I said, uh, very simple, um, just go online and Google transactional funding. Came back and he said, there's nobody that does transactional funding. So I Googled transactional funding from Florida, and I saw like 15 people that do it. His next thing was, well, I talked to, listen to this, I talked to, dozens of closing agents and none of them will do double closings. Well, look guys, this is very similar to, you know, my dog ate my homework. Uh, there's, it's very, very simple. You go to a local RIA and you look at vendors. Any of those vendors is going to do double closings that's an attorney or a closing agent. That's what we do. I mean, that's our livelihood. So, if you find that you get into a situation where you're trying to get through something and you have to take a no for an answer, don't just take one, two, or three no's. Keep going. How important is it to you to be successful? Well, one of the things you're going to find out is when you make a presentation to a homeowner and they say no, don't stop. The most successful salespeople in the world, I know you don't want to be a salesperson, but the most successful salespeople keep going back at least six to eight times to get a no. You know, if you get a no, one of the worst ones is, uh, i got to think about it. There's, you have to have an answer for that because that's a no. Disguised as, you know, I like you, I'm going to be polite, but get your butt out of here because I'm not doing it at that price. So your response has to be somewhat on the order that you're comfortable with. Mrs. Johnson, I understand um, that anytime somebody tells me, that they're going to think about it. What I've really done is I haven't done my job. What is it you really are going to think about? And if you're saying to yourself, well, I couldn't do that because, boy, she'd say no. She already said no. He said no, whoever it is. You've got to find out what the real problem is. And if that seller's not motivated, if they don't have something to do with, it's a real headache, get me out. There's a deadline, get me out by that date. And they're not motivated. They're talking about price what they got eight years ago for cash and what's down the street. They're not motivated. You're wasting your time. Let an agent sit with them for a year and uh, let them try and sell it. You're the cash buyer who can solve their problem. All right, enough for the two minutes. Um, I'll see you in the next one.